today we are going to see about CACD in Azure Databricks. So I have received many messages and comments to upload a CACD video on Databricks. And that's the reason I'm making this video. So please do watch it until the end and give a like to this video if you find it useful. Okay, so without wasting further time, let's get started. So firstly, for doing the CACD, I'm going to use this Databricks workspace. So this is the workspace that we use for doing the end-to-end -end complete data engineering project. As you can see here, we have the notebooks, bronze to silver, silver to gold, and storage mount, which we created for that end-to-end -end project. So we can use the same Databricks workspace for doing our CACD pipeline as well. So the reason for using this is, we have already seen how the data engineering is done in the end-to-end -end project. And this CACD would be an extension to that project. So if you haven't watched that end-to-end -end project video, I would highly recommend you all to watch that since we have covered different concepts and resources, which is really important to know to become an Azure Data Engineer. Okay, so now before actually seeing about what is CACD, let's first see how we are going to implement the CACD for Azure Databricks with an example. Consider we have a dev resource group. In that resource group, consider we have a Azure Databricks workspace created. In that workspace, consider we have created different notebooks for doing some data engineering task. Now we have all these in dev environment, which also means that it is in dev resource group. So the main idea of the CACD pipeline is to deploy the code from one environment to other environment. The other environment here can be a production environment. Also different companies use different numbers and types of environment. Say for example, a company can have three environments like dev UAT and prod or dev QA and prod. And the other company might have only two environments which are dev and prod, which is the standard thing followed by most of the companies. So let's go with the two environments for this CACD demo, which is dev and prod. So similar to dev environment, the prod will have all the resources created. The only differences here is we will not be using the prod resource for doing any development work. So what I mean by this is we'll be creating the notebooks and write any code only in dev environment. And we need to deploy all the code changes from dev to prod via a CACD pipeline. So that's the main idea here. So for doing the CACD process, the most important thing here is the Git repository. So there are different kinds of repository available, such as GitHub, Azure DevOps, and several others. In this tutorial, we'll be using the Azure DevOps repository for implementing the CACD pipeline. So in simple terms, the repository is mainly used to save all our code. So here we'll be integrating this repository to only one environment, which is dev environment. So what I mean by this is, only the Databricks workspace which is in the dev resource group will be integrated with the repository. There will be no connection between the prod Databricks workspace and the repository. Okay, so now let's discuss about the CACD process. So here we'll be doing all our code changes only in the dev Databricks workspace. And once we have completed all our work, we can commit all our changes to the Git repository, which means that we are saving all our code to the repository. And now, as soon as you commit the changes to the Git repository, what will happen is the CACD pipeline will get triggered and the pipeline will get the latest changes from the dev environment and deploy all the latest code to the production environment. This is the complete CACD process. So here, the part where we integrate the dev changes to the repository is called as continuous integration. And the part where we are deploying all the latest code from dev to prod is called as continuous deployment. And this is called as CACD, which is continuous integration and continuous deployment. So now let's see what is CACD. It is a set of practices used to automate and streamline the process of building, testing, and deploying code changes to different environments. I hope now you have a clear understanding of what is CACD? Okay, so now let's discuss about the merging techniques that we are going to use in the Databricks CACD process. The merging techniques is also called as branching techniques. 
So there are different ways of merging techniques followed by different companies. So let's take one method and discuss this with an example. So consider there are two data engineers, data engineer one and data engineer two. So these two data engineers are currently working collaboratively with one Databricks workspace. So this Databricks workspace is in the dev environment. We all know that all the development work is only done in the dev environment. Now, as discussed before, for the CACD process, the first and foremost important thing is integrating Databricks workspace with a Git repository. So we are going to use the Azure DevOps repository for this integration. Okay, so let's consider we have integrated Azure DevOps repository to the Databricks workspace. So while doing this integration, we need to create a main branch in this repository. So this main branch is really important. The reason for that is the CACD pipeline that we are going to create will trigger only when there is a change happening in the main branch. What I mean by this is, say for example, if a data engineer makes some changes to the main branch, then this will act as a triggering point for our CICD pipeline. And the pipeline will get the latest changes from the dev and deploy to the prod. So that's the reason the main branch is really important. So now in terms of the branching technique, we are going to protect this main branch. So what I mean by protection is, no data engineers can directly make a change to this main branch they cannot update any code directly in the main branch. Say for example, if the data engineer one needs to make a change, then he must create a new branch based on the main branch. This branch can be a future branch which has the exact copy of the main branch. So he needs to make all the changes only on this future branch that he has created and cannot make any changes in the main branch. Similarly, if the data engineer two needs to make any changes, then he has to create his own feature branch and use that branch to do any work. So in case if someone tries to make changes directly to the main branch, then they should get an error. So this is called branch protection. And we are protecting the main branch based on the merging techniques that we follow in the CICD process. Okay, so now let's see how these data engineers can update their changes to the main branch. So consider the data engineer one has finished his changes. Then what he can do is he can commit all his changes to his feature branch. Similarly, the data engineer two has completed all his changes and have committed the changes to his feature branch. Okay, now we are in the most important part of the CACD process. So both of these data engineers have completed their respective work. You may now ask a question, whose changes should be merged to the main branch first? The answer to this question depends on the priority between these two changes. What I mean by this priority is, whose changes should be first deployed to the prod should be most to the main branch first. So for this, the data engineers and the other operation team should discuss and talk about the priorities. The reason for discussing the priority is, as soon as we merge the changes to the main branch, our CICD pipeline will trigger and deploy the changes to the prod environment. So that's the reason discussing about the priorities is very important in the CACD process. Okay, so consider they have decided for the data engineer one to merge his changes to the main branch first. So now what the data engineer one should do is, he has to create a pull request to merge his changes from the future one branch to the main branch. So once this PR gets approved, all the changes done by the data engineer one will be merged to the main branch. Okay, so now the main branch gets updated with the latest changes. So now what will happen is, as discussed before, the CSID pipeline will get triggered and it will get all the latest changes from the dev environment and will deploy all the code to the prod environment. So this is the complete process of CICD. So once the pipeline has finished deploying all the changes, the data engineer too can follow the same step by creating another pull request to merge his changes from the future to branch to the main branch. So after merging the changes, the CACD pipeline will again get triggered and it will deploy the latest changes to the prod environment. So this is the merging technique that we are going to use in the CACD process. 
Okay, so I think now you have a clear understanding about what is CICD and what is the merging technique that we are going to use in the CICD pipeline. In the next section, we'll be seeing how to set up the repository and other environment setup like branch protection, permissions, and other stuff. And after that, we'll be seeing how to create a continuous integration pipeline. And then we'll be seeing about the continuous deployment pipeline. And finally, we'll be doing a complete CICD pipeline testing. So this is the agenda for the CICD demo. So in this section, we have seen about the introduction to the CICD. And in the next section, we can see about setting up the repository and other environment setup required for this CICD process.